Welcome to Plus Life, the show that's all about inspiring you to live a better life. In this episode, we'll hear from rock legend Chuck Pinozo of Styx, and it all starts in one minute. For people living with HIV, keep being you and ask your doctor about Victarvi. Victarvi is a complete one pill, once a day treatment used for HIV in certain adults. It's not a cure, but with one small pill, Victarvi fights HIV to help you get to and stay undetectable. That's when the amount of virus is so low, it cannot be measured by a lab test. Research shows people who take HIV treatment every day and get to and stay undetectable can no longer transmit HIV through sex. Serious side effects can occur, including kidney problems and kidney failure. Rare, life-threatening side effects include a buildup of lactic acid and liver problems. Do not take Victarvi if you take dofetilide or rifampin. Tell your doctor about all the medicines and supplements you take if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, or if you have kidney or liver problems, including hepatitis. If you have hepatitis B, do not stop taking Victarvi without talking to your doctor. Common side effects were diarrhea, nausea, and headache. If you're living with HIV, keep loving who you are and ask your doctor if Victarvi is right for you. He is a 70s rock icon and legend. He's an LGBTQ activist and an HIV advocate as well. It gives me great pleasure to say hello, Chuck Panozzo. How are you, sir? Hey, Carl. Very well, thank you. You are an astounding bass player, but you also played the accordion. At what point do you go from accordion to bass? I'm always performing an instrument I don't play at all. I started with the guitar. I started with drums, like my brother, who needs two drummers. Then I switched to the guitar and then the bass. So I am the bass player. I want to dive into Styx a little bit and, you know, for the Gen Z who may not be familiar with some of those iconic tracks, but you guys actually have a new album in the works, right? We just came up one that was very successful called Mission and uh, it's kind of a performance piece, which I really loved. So he's, they're working on the material for us. So we, we just got a little, uh, a little bit of it. There is material being run all the time, which is really kind of a, a wonderful thing to be a part of. Yeah, and to be bringing it back, I mean, Styx, uh, I mean, it traces back, really, founded in uh, 1972, the band, but but as I said at the, in the intro there, you've really been playing music your whole life, haven't you? What what does music mean to you? This picture is from 1962. You know, you can see it. John, Dennis, and myself, we started this little band called The Trade Winds, so then we came to W4, and um, in 1972, I was teaching high school in City Chicago, and um, I had to call you to have a record deal. And um, so I can either um, look from 1972 for my for my first song um, contract or to this little preview that um, we played New Year's Eve and never stopped performing. In reading your bio notes, young rock musician, that you left for a year to go to seminary, which you would think is quite sort of quite polar opposites, wouldn't you? I was 14 years old. I was there for a year. I was in Sarger, Michigan. Of course, you can't go anywhere. Can't do anything. So I, we had access to, to, to the lake, so I walked through the forest and go through the sand dunes and make sure no priest followed you. But the, um, I found a sense of spirituality there that I needed to find in a form of religion. This is nothing what I expected. It was an experience. I've heard many musicians give interviews where they say their music is their religion. Do you relate to that kind of statement? You know, when you hear songs like Come Somewhere from Yourself, these are songs that are written up from experience. And we give our audience permission to be young again. And by doing that, we allow ourselves to be young again. So I think that's a very cool part of what we do. I don't know if that's religion, but it's, it's been a huge part of my life. Um, I, I I think I still feel more of a teacher. That's why I think um, strong for the help see. Also, in making sure people are aware of HIV and, and the same with HIV, and also uh, an AIDS survivor, which is not, not a bad thing to, uh, to have accomplished. Certainly not a bad thing to accomplish, and to be, <laughs> especially because you were uh, diagnosed, I believe, in 1991. Did it make you question any of your sort of thoughts on faith when you got that diagnosis? So, I wasn't shocked that I would have HIV because my friends were dying of AIDS. But the first, you're just recriminating yourself, like, what have I done? What have I done? How have I, how do I let this happen? Um, and I think there's a lot of that kind of shame and blame. Were there moments for you that you were just crippled or taken down by the fear of what this virus would mean for your body of work, past and moving forward? But as I look back at that, 
It gave me the strength to say either, you're gonna either cry like a little baby and let this thing take you away, or you're gonna beat this thing, no matter how difficult it is. Plus, I had a band to support me, had a family to support me. Now, I never realized, Chuck, the level of internalized stigma I carried for 10 years until I actually spoke publicly about it, even though my friends and family knew, but two years ago when I told my story, this, this, this sort of relief off my shoulders. When you go down that road to your truth, it's not always easy. It takes a little while to understand that. How you are finding this whole coronavirus pandemic. Uh, as a man who lived through the AIDS pandemic. I think it's ridiculous that people don't listen to our, a doctor who's a researcher scientist. If I listened to a politician and to the church and the government, I'd be dead. So I, I have this strength about myself that um, I've been through this before. Well, listen, this has been an absolute joy in talking to you. Uh, thank you for the decades of music, but beyond that, thank you for the decades of your advocacy and your support and your, your fearless uh, approach to educating the world about HIV and AIDS. Thank you, Carl. Bye-bye.